Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala So we will continue to read in the book of Sayyid Muslim <coughs> So this chapter that we started a couple of days ago talks about itlaqu ismi al-kufri ala man taraka salah That the word kufr or kafir is also mentioned in the texts of Sunnah on somebody who has abandoned Salah. We read the first hadith in this uh, chapter, which is the hadith that talks about shaitan when he uh, saw, when he sees someone making sujood, he starts lamenting and crying. And he says that this person deserves Jannah because he followed Allah's command and made sujood. He prostrated when Allah commanded him, while I refused and rejected, thus I am condemned to the fire of hell. Why is Imam Muslim mentioning this hadith in, in this place? Although this hadith really doesn't relate at all, like uh, if you look from the outside, you would think that this hadith is not related to the matter of salah or the ruling on the person who has abandoned salah. But he mentioned this hadith here. Because Allah says, إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَى وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ That Iblis refused to make sujood. Abba refused, rejected the commandment. وَاسْتَكْبَرَ And showed arrogance. وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And he has become a kafir. He has become a disbeliever by doing that. Some scholars use this verse actually as evidence that the person who totally abandoned Salah is no longer a Muslim. Because they say Allah condemned Iblis uh, to fire of hell and that he is a kafir, a rejecter of Allah Azza wa Jal, based on his refusal to make sujood. Although the sujood of uh, Iblis, that Iblis was commanded to do, was not even for Allah, was just a sujood of respect to uh, the human being. What about the sujood to Allah if somebody rejects to make sujood to Allah? That's a bigger crime. That's a bigger, bigger crime. <clears throat> but some other scholars responded and said that uh, this doesn't apply because of the difference in sujood, the difference in context as well. Yani, this is somebody who is Allah is talking to directly and he's, he knows about Allah so much and he's lived up in Al-Mala Al-A'la with the angels and so on. And he get, receives a direct commandment from Allah and he directly and arrogantly defies Allah face to face like this. And also istakbara, it was out of arrogance. Most people who abandon the salah, most Muslims who totally abandon salah, they don't do this out of arrogance and refusal to submit themselves to Allah. It's usually due to what? Due to what? Usually. What, Muslims who don't pray. Laziness. What? Laziness mostly. Laziness and being taken away by dunya. That's the main, yeah, too much busy with dunya and laziness and lack of remembrance, right? They are, but if you remind them, they feel sorry. They don't feel that, oh, I, I won't, I'm not going to make sujood to Allah. <laughs> they don't say that, right? <laughs> exactly. So they really, exactly, exactly. And also they have the intention to make salah. That's another thing. Exactly. That's a very important point, by the way, because the scholars, exactly. The scholars who said he's a kafir, they don't know the intention of that person, right? He hasn't made salah for several years, but he thinks that, oh, inshallah, I will make it. Next, next Ramadan, I'll start praying. Next Ramadan, I'll start praying. Yeah. Right? And it doesn't happen. So, uh, the, actually, يعني, the majority of scholars do not consider the person who has abandoned salah completely to be a kafir. It's very important to remember that because... Yani some people have a louder noise than others. If you look on the internet, you'll find that you feel that every, all scholars have said that who abandoned Salah completely is a kafir. That's not the reality. The vast majority of scholars have said no. He's still a Muslim, but he's committed a huge, huge sin. One of the biggest sin possible to commit. But he, he exactly, he, he's still a Muslim. He's still a Muslim now because you don't know his intention. He did, if indeed, if indeed. He has, he has abandoned salah out of arrogance and rejection to make sujood to Allah. Um, there is a, uh, for instance, Ibn Taymiyyah says, because in the past when there was a Muslim ruling, Islamic ruling, 
uh, people who didn't pray, they were held, held accountable by the authorities. They would bring them and they would put them, they would imprison them uh, until they actually made, uh, uh, started repenting and starting doing the salah. If he do, does one salah, they will let him go. Correct? <laughs> That's actually the Imam Abu Hanifa. It's a crime not to make salah. Exactly, exactly. It was a crime. It, uh, the authorities would have to punish that person by imprisonment until he starts making salah. And then they would let him go. This is what Imam Abu Hanifa said. Um, some other scholars had a very strong stance on this. They said he gets imprisoned and he's given a chance to repent. If he doesn't repent, he gets the capital punishment of death, death penalty. Yes, uh, Imam Ibn Tamiya said, if somebody is being threatened by death penalty, and all he has to do is get up and make wudu and salah, and he refuses, of course he's not a Muslim. <laughs> then it makes sense, really. Yani, all you have to do is make wudu and salah and, and, not, and avoid getting killed. But somebody say, no, I will die but not make salah. What is this? <laughs> That's that, exactly. This kind of scenario <laughs> could be a real, a, kaf, a real kafir. Now, how many minutes? Okay. We went for six uh, minutes and so. So, uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll stop here for this session.